What if you're in a Spring Boot application and you need to talk to another service? How do you do it? You could use one of the many clients available to you in Spring, but then you'd have to write the code yourself. What if you could take advantage of a feature that allowed you to write almost no code to talk to another service? Would that be something you're interested in? Of course it would. And that's exactly what we're going to take a look at today. HTTP interfaces in Spring, in Spring MVC to be specific, using the REST client underneath the hood. So I'm teaming up with my friends at Spring Academy, and this will allow you to follow along with this tutorial right in the browser without having to like set up your IDE. Uh, so if you want to find out more, go ahead and check out the link below for Spring Academy. It will take you over to this lesson, and you can kind of follow along if you want. So what we're going to do, we are over here at start.spring.io. We're going to create a new Spring Boot application. It's just going to be a web application. And then we will talk to a public API. We'll start with the REST client just to give you an idea of like the code that you would write if you are talking to another service. And then we'll look at how HTTP interfaces can kind of alleviate that code and make this very simple for us. So I'm going to pick a Java app. I'm going to use Maven. I'm using the latest version of Spring Boot, which at the time of this recording is 3.2.3. I'm going to go ahead and fill this in, dev.danvega. We'll call this HTTP uh, users. That sounds like a good one. I'm going to choose Java 21. You can choose Java 17 if you'd like. And all we're going to do is pick a web application. Now, the web brings in the infrastructure for building out web apps. It also brings in that new REST client that's in 3.2. This is the client that allows you to use the imperative style programming approach and talk to other services out there. So that is all we need. I'm going to go ahead and generate this project. It will create a zip file. I will go ahead and open this up in IntelliJ Ultimate Edition, but you don't need that. Use whatever IDE or text editor you're most productive in. And what are we waiting for? Let's write some code. All right, so the public API that we're going to be using today to kind of test our client out, our HTTP interfaces out, is JSON placeholder service. I'm going to use a different one. I've, if you've been following this channel, you know that I love this API. It's just a fake API that we can use to like test out some things. And it doesn't need authentication. A lot of the times I've used like posts uh, or to-dos, but today we're going to use users. So let's jump into users and see uh, what this gets back. We get 10 users out of here. Um, and we'll need to, to kind of model one of these. It's a little more uh, code to, to kind of model this out as a type, but that's okay. We're going to have some fun with it today. So what I'm going to do is start with just copying this so that I can go over to the Java side of things and start to model this out. So with that, I'm going to head back to IntelliJ. Here we are in our application, and I'm going to create a new package in here. So I'm going to call this, uh, whoops, I'm going to call this package user. And inside of user, this will contain all the code. Uh, related to the user feature. And that starts with modeling that user out. So I'm going to use a record to basically model out a user. And so I'm going to say new Java class. I'm going to call this user. And this is going to be of type record. And then I copied that before because I like to just kind of paste this in here and look at this and go, OK, well, how can I create a user from this? So the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to do this on separate lines. This might get a little long. So I'm going to say integer ID. Uh, oh, this is pretty good. Copilot's on its game today. So we have a ID, a name, a username, an email, right? Then we have an address, which is made up of street, suite, city, zip code, geo. And then geo is made of Latin long, uh, phone, website, and then company. So these things in red are going to have to be other uh, types. So we can do that in IntelliJ. I'm just going to say, um, go ahead and, oops, come on, and create a new record for address. So what does that look like? Um, again, that was, I bet you Copilot's co going to help us out here again. Street, suite, city, zip code, geo. That looks good. So now we'll need to create a geo as well. So let's go ahead and create a record for geo. And um, this is going to be lat and long, I think. Yeah, that uh, should be right. Now, this is going to be a double, though. Let's do this. Let's say double 
And then I can't say long, but I can say longitude, and I can say latitude, right? So that's our geo. So our address looks good. Uh, the last thing that we need is a company. So I'm going to create a record for company. And then this is OK. And then I think for company, we just need name, catchphrase, and day. So string, catchphrase, and string BS. What does BS stand for? Um, all right, some BS. <laughs> Um, okay, cool. So now we have a user object in our system. This is good. We've basically modeled out one entire user that will come back from that API. So now we have something that we can convert that JSON over to. If you wanted to, you could probably get more generic and just some use some generic features of Jackson to say, hey, this is a, like a node. But I thought it'd be fun to kind of model this out. So we have a user that's made up of address company and address is made up of geo. So we have all our types in place. So now what I want to do is actually um, create a REST client using the REST client that's in Spring MVC or Spring Boot 3.2 and in the imperative style type of programming, just so we could see exactly what it takes to kind of make that HTTP call. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and create a new Java class. We'll call this user rest client. And in this rest client, I will get, uh, actually let's mark this with a component. And I will get an instance of uh, the rest client. So let me say private final rest client, rest client. Um, no, I'm going to just create a constructor, select none. And what we'll do in here is we'll get rest client builder, call this builder. And yes, that looks pretty good. So we, what we do is we set up the base URL for the REST client. So then every other method down here, when we create like a get all or a get or a post, then we'll just use the URI, uh, what comes after the base URL to contact that service. So let's just create an example where we get a list of those users. Uh, we'll call this find all and we'll use the REST client. So we'll say return rest client dot and then we have some really nice options here for like what are we going to do with this rest client i'm going to create a git call to slash uri this is going to go to slash users again that's the url that we looked at before that returns 10 different users then i'm going to say retrieve that then i'm going to say okay what do we want to turn that into we actually want to turn that into a new parameterized type reference and that should return those then I can get a single user back, and actually this will be an optional uh, user. And how do we do that? Let's say find by ID, and this will take an integer ID, and uh, no, that's not how I'm going to do it today, REST client, or copilot. So I'm going to say REST client .get. I'm going to say URI is going to be slash users slash ID. Uh, the ID that we're going to get is through the argument there. So I'm going to say ID. And then we're going to retrieve this and we're going to turn this into a user. So again, that's why we modeled that out is because now we can tell whatever's coming back, hey, we have this particular thing. This is a user that's coming back. This is how we want to go ahead and uh, basically parse that response. Um, and actually this isn't, I'm not gonna return, I'm just gonna return a user, how about that? Okay, so uh, this looks pretty good so far. Let's go ahead and write a controller for this. Let's call this user controller. And in here we are gonna mark this as a rest controller. This is going to have a request mapping of slash users. And then we are going to write a couple of methods in here. First, we need to get access to that client. So I'm going to say uh, user uh, rest client. Uh, we'll call this just client because I'll swap this out for HTTP interfaces later. And we'll get this in a constructor parameter. And now we can have a git mapping for just that, which will give us all the users. And we could say, um, give me back a list of users. We'll call this find all and we'll return the uh, clients.findAll method, right? 
So that should basically return to us 10 new users. Let's go ahead and test this out. We're gonna go ahead and run this application. So I'll run it here in the IDE. When this starts up, if everything's okay, we can go over to the terminal. You could also go over to the browser for this, but I'm just gonna test this here. I'm gonna use HTTP IE, which is basically curl for humans. Uh, you can use curl for this if you want, but this is easier to kind of read through, I think. So I'm gonna say, um, I'm making a call to HTTP localhost 8080 slash users. And if we do everything correctly, we got our 10 users. Now let's just modify that controller and get a single user. So our git mapping will be for slash ID. Um, that looks good, except I need a path variable for that. I'm gonna go ahead and restart my application. And now what I wanna do is just make another call in the terminal and I'll make it to uh, the same thing, but slash one and we get a particular user. And if we wanna go slash nine, we get another user. So our methods are working. We are able to talk to the JSON placeholder service and the users, and we're able to like create those users uh, from uh, that response that we're getting. But again, we have started to write this low-level code. For these two methods, if that's all I was doing, I'd probably use a REST client. But what about situations where you're talking to other services and maybe there are like 10, 15 things you have to do? And this can get pretty verbose, and this is just one resource. What if you have to do this for a bunch of different resources, right? Uh, this can get pretty ver verbose. So what we can do is actually take advantage of something in Spring called HTTP interfaces. Now I've done videos on this in the past, but in the past you had to bring in another dependency in Spring Webflux because the underlying HTTP interfaces feature relied on the web client. Well now that's no longer the case because in Spring Boot 3.2 we have this REST client and it can go ahead and take advantage of that and use that. Now, if you're in a Spring Web Flux application, HTTP interfaces underneath the hood will use the web client. So it knows what type of app you're in. It knows which one to use. You don't have to bring in external dependencies for that. So let's close all of this up and talk about how this is going to help us. So I'm gonna create a new class in here. I'm gonna call this the user HTTP client right? And what we're going to do in here is we're just going to, this is actually should be an interface. And all we're going to do is create the contract for what we want to do here, right? So thinking of the REST client before, we created that base URL and then we have the URI on the end. We're going to use the git exchange annotation. So there's an HTTP exchange there is git, post, put, delete, etc. So the git exchange says this is going to be a git call. What's the URI that we're gonna call? So we'll, we'll provide the base URL for this interface, um, but these are like the URIs after that. So all we're gonna say is we expect to find a list of users, and I'm gonna call this find all, just so it's the same as it was in our REST client. I'm also going to say, let's create a git exchange for slash ID, and actually let's change that to slash users slash ID. And I expect to get back a user, and I'm gonna call this find by ID. I'm going to get the integer uh, ID through a path variable, so I'll set that up. So this is all we have to write. This is basically going to be equivalent to what we wrote in here uh, with a, a little bit of boilerplate code to actually set up the client. So now that we have this, we can go into any kind of configuration class. So we could do this in its own config if we wanted to. We could do this in the application. Um, and I think I'll do it here because again, this is a configuration class. If we drill into it, uh, we see this is at Spring Boot configuration, which is marked with configuration. So that means that we could write some beans in here. You could, again, you could do this in another class if you wanted to. So I'm gonna say bean, and so I'm gonna create a bean of type user HTTP client. We'll call this user HTTP client. And all I wanna do is set up that REST client similar to how I did before. REST client is equal to, let's call it client, is equal to REST client.builder. Yes, that looks good. Uh, from there, I'm going to create an HTTP service proxy factory. I'm going to call builder builder four, 
And in there, I'm going to use the REST client adapter to create that. Uh, let's actually get a var from that. We'll call this the factory. Uh, nope. Right, and then from there we can call the, we can return whatever the factory's create client is, and we're gonna use it for the user HTTP client class. Now, the first time you're seeing this, oh damn, this is more boilerplate code. I get it, I get it, I get it. But I create some like uh, templates or live templates in IntelliJ or shortcuts in whatever program you're using. And I just kind of, hey, I have a, I have a quick one for this that creates this code for me. So you can go ahead and cut down on some of that, but this is also something we may be able to cut down in in the future. But this sets up the base URL for the client. It sets up the client, it passes it in there, and it returns to you this user HTTP client. This means that I can go in my controller, and instead of using the REST client, I'm gonna say this is the user HTTP client. Again, it's still called the client. Um, and then in this case, I don't need any of this. I can go ahead and just say that. And the client find all method, again, we haven't written an implementation of how to find all, how to get back all of those users, or how to call a specific endpoint to get just a single user. That is in an interface. And at runtime, when we rerun this, Spring is going to turn that into an implementation for us and make this available. So this means I should be able to go back to my terminal. I should be able to get a specific user. I should be able to get all the users, and I can. The code doesn't change there. You have fact, the only thing that changes is I didn't have to write any of that code, which is really, really great. So that's it. Um, HTTP interface is in Spring Framework 6.0 and above and Spring Boot 3.0 and above. But if you want to take advantage of it in an MVC style application with the REST client and not having to pull in any additional dependencies, you'll want to be on Spring Boot 3.2, Spring Framework 6.1, and all of this just works. So friends, I hope you found some value in this. If you did, please do me a big favor, leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and if you didn't have a chance in this tutorial to head over to Spring Academy. The link for that will be below. You can actually go through and follow this same tutorial in an online environment without having to like set up the IDE or download the repo. You can just kind of follow everything there. So check out our friends at Spring Academy. And with that, happy coding, friends. Yeah.